Welcome back to Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast with your host, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. Thank you for being here today. As we are yet in the month of October, we are in our Survivor Series. Um, in the month of October, we focus on breast cancer survivors and survivors of domestic violence. And so our show today is um, going to be uh, our conversation today with our dialogue partner, uh, I believe will be very informative, enlightening, um, and and may even call us to task at another level of awareness as it relates to uh, domestic violence or intimate partner violence. We have a wonderful woman who's going to come in today who has a dynamic story of survival and she has learned how to turn her pain into purpose. And so we're going to be talking to her in just a moment. And I just want you to um, to get yourself ready to, to be inspired, to be um, enlightened, to be informed, and maybe even to be challenged by our conversation on today. And we will be right back right after this. All right, I have in the podcast studio with me today, Ms. LaDonna Roberts. LaDonna Roberts is the founder of the Austin Tyler Foundation. And we'll be talking to her today, but I want to just give you a little bit of, of history or, or her overview and share a little bit about who she is and why she is um, in our studio today to talk to us, why I felt it would be to have her uh, would be a great um, dialogue partner on this issue of domestic violence. Um, the inception um, of the Austin Tyler Foundation was inspired by the by LaDonna's true story. Um, she is a domestic violence victim and survivor. Unfortunately, the end of her story was a very tragic one. She is indeed one of the real faces of domestic violence. The um, at um, age of 31, um, she she says she was wearing a terrible mask, a terrible secret, and her four-year-old son, Austin Tyler, were both shot by the man who asked her to marry him. Austin was shot to death on September 21st, 2004, mm -hmm. as he stood outside with his mother at the Daughtry County Pre-K School Building in Albany, Georgia. LaDonna's estranged boyfriend, an, an on-duty police officer who had taken an oath to protect and serve, was upset because LaDonna planned to move to the metro Atlanta area with, uh, with their son. He was enraged with LaDonna and their son and um, killed their son and then killed himself. The Austin Tyler Foundation now brings awareness to domestic violence and a, a, a domestic abuse to women and their children. They're focusing on uh, embracing, educating, and empowering uh, the, uh, women in the community. These efforts break um, are done so to break the cycle of domestic violence so that the victims will live beyond the abuse and live a fulfilling life. And LaDonna is a living testimony of that. We're going to be talking to her today about how she turned her pain into purpose through the Austin Tyler Foundation. Will you please welcome uh, LaDonna to our podcast conversation and our community today? Thank you for being here with us today, LaDonna. Thank you, Dr. Alvarado. Thank you. So, LaDonna, um, I shared a little bit of your story, but I'm sure you have a little bit more that you can share 
And so if you'll just um, kind of give us a little bit more insight into your story and why you are an advocate for survivors of domestic violence. Okay, thanks again for having me here. I love um, this. I love you, first of all. <laughs> Thank you, and I love you too. <laughs> and I love um, what God has um, given me the gift and the ability to do. First, I would like to um, start off to dedicate this uh, podcast to my aunt, which is also a breast cancer survivor. Okay. Um, of course, we know that's Breast Cancer Survivor Awareness Month as well. Mm -hmm. And we lost her yesterday. So I know she was one of my biggest supporters. So, um, so and sorry. I knew this. And I say, Auntie, I know only because of you, I'm going to keep pushing through. So I want to dedicate this interview to her in her memory. And what is her name? Marion King. Marion King. Let's call her name. Yes. Marion King. Marion King. Right. She's gone and uh, joined that great cloud of witnesses. Oh, yes. Yes. So I have some more angels keep pushing and encouraging me to keep continue to fight and raise awareness. So I was in this relationship and, you know, on again, off again relationship, you know, how these things go. And, and we, we end things, we can't see the clear picture. And later we see signs and, and, and can um, identify those things. But in the middle of it, you don't know it because it's foreign. It's, you know, you just don't know. And um, everything was fine. And then uh, when I broke it off, that's when I'm going to go. I'm going to start a little bit. I hope we got enough time, Doc. <laughs> yes, we have time. Go ahead. Okay. So um, I was an ex-police officer. Okay. Um, so I was. that's how I met him. Okay. And I didn't know the circumstances because I worked for the county and he was worked with the city police department. Okay. So that's how we started talking. Okay. And um, as time gone, um, we bared a child together. And of course, once Austin got here, um, we didn't know what was to come and we didn't live together. So some of the signs women can um, see because they're in the household, but I had my dwelling, he had his dwelling. So it wasn't oh. like in the house, in your face type okay. of, um, and my, my, um, issue was it wasn't physical everybody can identify with the physical my was psychological and emotional um abuse uh -huh. that i suffered because i had for the um, the world the american dream sort of speak own house educated car career mm -hmm. i already had that mm -hmm. so that's what it looks like so but yet and still this, the signs were there at hindsight 2020, mm -hmm. but I had already left the relationship. Okay. And so after nine months after, so in 2003, Austin was born in 2000. And because I'm a new mother and trying to go through all that stuff, mm -hmm. I mean, the baby was the focus. Okay. Still trying things work. Um, in 2003 was our first altercation after that was one on again and off again relationship. Mm -hmm. um, he came to my residence where I had another male um, friend there and we were outside and we were getting ready to leave. And I had Austin in my arms and he got out. Him and his sister um, came up and got out of the vehicle and came and he struck me and then um he threatened my friend that was there. Um, so that's when he was um, later charged with um, domestic violence, bat battery, um, terroristic threats, and cruelty to children. Now, this was, this was before the shooting? This was before the shooting. This okay. was in 2003. Okay, okay. And at that point, um, that's when the police was called. He was charged. And everything. Okay. And after that, maybe about um, 
several weeks ago, it called the honeymoon stage, you know, the flowers and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry. And, and mm -hmm. I wasn't accepting anything, but in, in that moment, I am in that moment when the police was called, I'm still thinking about him. Mm -hmm. You know, he has other children. I call that the, the victim's remorse. Okay. Um, because you're thinking about the batterer, not yourself and your children okay. or the child in my case. Okay. So it was um, at that point, um, he got other kids. He's going to lose his job. I, I still loved him. You know, you just go through all those different things. And so one day um, he called and I answered and he said he wanted to um, get back with me. He wanted to make everything right. And in my mind, because you know, Doc, we always think about mm -hmm. that um, husband, the white picket fence, the house, the cat, the dog. Mm -hmm. Now my motto is lead at the Disney World. <laughs> We got to stop. We got to stop telling our kids to imagine. Sometimes that imagination, that fairy tale, that life, and let, let's give them some reality. Yeah, life yeah. Look, because so that was one of the things I did. I'm telling you my my story. Okay, okay. <laughs> that, um, I did, and I um because the DA, uh, his attorney, his attorney um written up a letter, mm -hmm. and I signed it in hopes of that we were going to get back together. Okay. This is one thing. This was the first time the battery, you know, just it's going to be better. It's okay. I didn't have see no signs other than, or didn't even know mm -hmm. that the statistics, one out of four women will be abused in their lifetime, not knowing seven to nine times before a woman actually leaves her battery. So I go back. And we try to work. And then you have this unction of something just not right. And, and it's time you get the rings. You're all excited. Um, trying to, you think you're going to plan a wedding. Mm -hmm. And mm -mm, then you get God involved. And one night I asked God, is this was my husband? And be careful. Now, grandma, um, little ancients, they used to tell us. And we used to laugh. Hey, I laugh now because they all coming true. Don't ask God if you're not ready for his answer. <laughs> and so I I did. I, I just was praying and I was asking because it just, it felt, I, I, I think because I wanted it. Okay. But the inside was saying, mm, you already know. You felt something different. But we tried to mask and continue to go along with things. Mm -hmm. And um. One night I was at his apartment and the phone rang late and it was another female and, you know, just talking, to him, asking for him and everything. I was just like, okay, this is it. So I got up. I, Austin was there and he was asleep. I went in the bathroom and I lit the top down and I was just sitting on the toilet and I was just crying because I was like, how could this be? How could I be in this situation? Mm -hmm. And, um, Austin came in to the bathroom and was rubbing my leg. We talking about a three-year-old was rubbing my leg. And, and I was like, no, I can't do this. I, I can't, I can't continue to do that night. That's when I left um, his engagement ring on his dresser. Um, Austin and I went back to our, our house and that was it. That was it. Um, when I just left the relationship wow totally. so you left the relationship a year before the actual shooting because yes. Austin was four and this Austin was about three this time so yep. in between that time did you engage with him nope and I, I, uh, after that I got Austin legitimized okay. I got Austin a uh, child support order and I got Austin a visitation order with his dad and with our Nana, uh, Nana that used to keep Austin, I would take and drop Austin off and Nana would call his dad and call, tell him, okay, Austin is here. So we had okay. no interaction with us. We just had, and so I'm, I'm good. We just going on and that's fine. 
and he had would pick him up um, on his days, assigned days, and it worked fine that way. And then once again, during this time, I started looking at myself, what I wanted, mm -hmm. um, because you, you couldn't tell me I wasn't that strong, black, independent woman. You know, <laughs> I didn't have no problems. What, what's going on? And then I realized that, you know, self-esteem self was low. I was just selling and God was just throwing and showing me all me. And so I had to start loving me. Then wow. I started looking at um, a change, a move for the better. Start looking for different jobs in Atlanta. Um, I got interviews and everything and no hits. So I was still just working on me doing, trying to get myself together. Um, and this one that I had an interview in September of 2000 and well, I think it was probably in August, August, September um, time mm -hmm. when I got an interview and with the department of community health. And you know, when you know you did good on the interview, <laughs> I, I knew I, I I walked out there knowing that I had that job. And I was okay. so bold that uh -huh. I told the, de the deputy director, shook his hand, thank you for this interview, but I'll be seeing you again. Okay, okay. That, that's how confident, confident yeah. I was. Confidence, yeah. I went back to, once I got back, went back to my current job at that time. I cleaned out my office. I typed up um, my uh, transfer because it still was I work for the state so it's still a, a transfer for a state or another state mm -hmm. position mm -hmm. I had typed up only thing I needed was to put in the date wow all my stuff was gone so when I did receive that call I did receive that call so um, I had two weeks my original start date um, was October the 1st of 20, 2004 Mm. And um, so I got all that. So I knew I had two weeks to find Austin a school, me housing. You know, I had my cousin that lived in a mm -hmm. well at the time. So I I knew I couldn't flip nothing that quick. And then I still had the property because I was um, a homeowner. So okay. I knew I was coming, going to be coming back. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to September the 21st. I had called um, Austin's father, Andrew, mm -hmm. and I worked at a call center. And you know you'd be on the phone, but oh. I just called him and said, hey, can you meet me at the at Austin school after I get off from work? And he was like, yeah. And, and it was so unorthodox because I hadn't talked to him okay. in that length of time. And then I pick up the phone to call him to tell him because I had a court order. And I wasn't going to allow him to use that against me because I knew I couldn't keep up the same um, because his his off days. So he had him like Saturday and he would take him to school that Monday and mm -hmm. then I would pick him up. So that's when his visitation days were. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I had to adjust. So I wasn't going to be in attempt for him to use that. So I that's why I called him that morning for him to um, meet me there. Still, no, not even thinking, nothing. I don't have no problem. We there's no interaction. Um, the last incident was 2000, March of 2003. There was no reason for me to think anything otherwise. So, after I got out from work, um, at four, the school wasn't far from the job. I went there, he was already there in the police car. Well, he had the police car because he was on duty. Mm -hmm. He had already checked Austin out, and um, and they we were just outside of the rail, and I um, and I you know of course greeted all, um, Austin, and um, he was had an avocado that gave him a snack, an avocado I never forget, and he's like take a bite, mom, and I bit it, and I was talking to Andrew, and I was um, saying hey, I got this job offer. We move it to Atlanta and I want to, you know, discuss how can we alter the schedule. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden he said, you moving from to be with a man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, what are you talking about? 
I'm moving. Let's talk about this. So um, then he pushed me. That's when the flip phone was out. And so I pulled out my flip phone to call 911. Me calling the police on the police. Wow. So he was like, no, I'm getting ready to leave. Don't worry. I said, so let me go and check him out. That's when I found out he already checked him out, had put his book bag in the police car. So as he was um, walking in front of me, I was behind and Austin was still playing out to the left of us. So when I turned my head to call for Austin to come, he had turned, Andrew had turned around, pulled out his service revolver, shooting me once, walking past me, calling for our son, shooting him before he then shot himself in the head, committing suicide. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. The 18, this past September 8th, um, 21st, made 18 years. I know I was supposed to be here. My finish on earth was not done. The bullet went through both of my hands and it pierced my left breast. We know where the heart is. I still have the bullet shell casing. You know, it's hot. It's hot. And I still have that imprint. And then on my hands. So um, one of my best friends, her grandmother um, was working at the school. And she, we had seen her. She had came in as well because he was at the extended day program. Mm -hmm. And she, that, because kids was on campus and everything. Mm -hmm. um, she came back to the door. I don't, you see pictures of my hand before. There's no way I could have put pressure to get myself up. Because that's how confident he he knew it shot me in, in the heart, in the chest. Um, and I got up and that's footprints in the sand. When you don't see but one set, you know God carried you. Mm. God carried me to the doorway mm. and that's when um, Doreen Thomas which is my mother um, pulled me in and that's when they had already started calling um, police and 911 mm. one thing I can tell you that um, God knew he, he he could pull he could have but he didn't he didn't with me for allow me to see him shoot and kill my baby. But he knew I would be able to sustain. Say that again, that what you just said. He knew that I couldn't relive mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. him shoot and kill my baby. Mm -hmm. But he knew I was prepared to see him shoot and kill himself. Because I seen that I seen that and it makes things hindsight 2020 again. My first time on the feet on, in the patrol car by myself was a suicide. Mm. Mm. So I've seen that before. Yeah. He was preparing me back then on duty mm. for what he knew I was going to travel to to see wow that's serious wow so how did you move forward from there madonna how did you move forward that's that's tragic i mean you were shot your child was murdered and and then you watched your the father of your child kill himself let me say it it was I don't have a word in my vocabulary that suits where I was at that time because it was, at times, I didn't even want to live. But because of um, the support I had, because <laughs> he set Talk me down. Or Talk about that. Who was your encouragement? Who was your support? The support, 
God was the support because I was I had pens in my right hand, um, cast on my left hand. I couldn't do anything. I had to go. I'm originally from Ocala, Florida. Um, so I had to go back home with my mom so she can take care of me during this process. Mm-hmm. And we all, we had Austin service in um, funeral service in Albany, Georgia. But then we laid him to rest in Ocala, my hometown. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was there um, during this time, just battling, battling mind, spirit, just mm-hmm. just every, depression, everything. Mm-hmm. But having the support of my family, my friends um, that just helped me focus and sustain. Even my husband, my husband um, for 10 years um, support the foundation, what I'm doing, even me surviving. Um, He helped, of course, along the way Mm -hmm. as well. Because I mean, as far as feeding myself, clothing, bathing, I couldn't do anything. And um, bef- I never heard of Crefo Dollar. And one morning, um, Brent brought me out, got me dressed and everything. And um, she went and got dressed and then she would cook us breakfast. And she was flung. She's like, okay, what you want to hear? And um, it, I said, well, you can leave it there. And it was Crefo Dollar. I can remember what passage he was saying. It, he, I just remember him saying that God knows everything. Nothing just happens. Everything happens for a reason. Wow. wow. That quickened my spirit. Mm. And I just wailed, well, well, because in my mind, couldn't phantom God, knowing this was going to happen, allowed to happen. And like, what you want me to do with this? Mm-hmm. And just left me to deal with this. I, I just couldn't phantom that. And my mom ran out of the room and and she was like, you got to calm down. You got to calm down. I just I just that was that was my battle of trying to wrestle with him to understand why. Okay. And um, so that part was um, a huge part awakening for me. And as I got up and continue to fight and fight and fight i just heard that still voice say awareness awareness Everything. Ask, so so um what was your turning point when you was able to see purpose in what you went through what was your what was your turning point doing that after that and just really trying to um Focus because listen, my Bible got Job has LaDonna in. I took Job name out because <laughs> I had to compare myself to somebody to keep my my sanity. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I put, I was like, oh my goodness, God, if you did this to Job, and I'm, you know, you took the man everything, you just took mine, and then he showed me as well that Austin belonged to him. He okay. I, he just loaned him to me. Okay. So, you know, when things start coming and he's still, wear, you know, awareness. And um, so that was one of my turning points of me, you know, having spiritual praying people around me that turn. And then I told a friend and I was like, hey, what you think about me starting a foundation? And I was like, oh, what? yeah, of course. And so I was like, he just keeps saying awareness. He keeps saying awareness. I keep mm-hmm. hearing awareness mm-hmm. because no matter what color, how much income, mm-hmm. education, mm-hmm. what you think you got together, mm-hmm. it didn't stop me from being a victim of domestic violence. So wow, he put it together. Let's start with awareness, but make prevention your priority. So you said something that I want to go back to. You said, even though you were educated, strong black woman, um, you know, you had a career, your own house, it did not stop you from becoming a victim of domestic violence. So that says to me, LaDonna, that at any point, any of us could be we're, we're all vulnerable to this happening at some point. Oh, it doesn't mean it will happen, but it could happen. It could happen. 
and you know someone because statistics show that one out of four will be based on what has already been reported. But Dr. Tony, guess what? We haven't included the ones that don't make the phone call to 911. So when we look at the totality of everything, we look at your women's um, ministry, look at the people you speak to every Sunday, one out of four, you looking at a victim or a survivor every, every Sunday. And I, I charge people because he that's told me that he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said three things that he showed me during this process of these last 18 years. You got to know me first. Whoever your maker is. And he's Jesus Christ for me. The second, you have to identify what that thing is. My was domestic violence it could be drug abuse alcohol um loss of job whatever but those are just triggers because domestic violence only equal control when he lost control that's when the rage ensued it it had nothing to do about him losing me or this that and the other because we hadn't been together in that long so it was the control. So yeah. when he was like, oh, he's an alcoholic, he's a drug. Yeah. He's a yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Those are triggers. He yeah. lost control. Control. You know, um, we had Tamiko Laurie on um a couple okay. of weeks ago. And she and we talked about the whole control piece. Mm -hmm. Um, and she said something that was very sobering. She said, the most dangerous time for a victim of domestic violence is when they announce that they're leaving. Yes. Mm -hmm. 75% mm -hmm. of women end up in homicide when she decides to leave her abuser. But duh, we got to raise awareness. We have to show, tell and in, inform people of this. God says knowledge is power. He don't hold us accountable for things we don't know. You're now held accountable for the information that has been provided to you and to share this information. Me being a police officer, being in uh, police academy for a 12 week time free period, we only had a two hour block on physical violence. What about sexual? What about uh, financial? You don't think that we don't look at those things mm -hmm. unless it's physical. Everything, it, they highlight physical. But sexual, uh, financial, emotional, psychological, you know, physical, yeah. But what about these other topics? I didn't know. Being trained to have arrested people, have, have not arrested because I didn't see any physical evidence. Oh. But that woman could have been suffering. We have a problem. Because we didn't see the physical evidence. Wow. Yes. I can't rest you on that psychological. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is this is deep. This this yes. is deep. Wow. So you turned your pain into purpose through the Austin Tyler Foundation. And um, I'm hearing your your police background and all of that. What are some of the initiatives? What do you all do? But I heard you say not just awareness, but prevention. Yes. So what type of work are you doing through the foundation? What initiatives, programs, events, things that you're doing, education, educating? How are you empowering women, not just for awareness, but also for, for prevention? And do you work with abusers as well or just victims? Yes, everything. Because I had to go and I like that piece, too, because um, we forget about them. I had to also go through a different process of grieving and forgiveness okay because the dead couldn't speak the dead was gone and i had a lot of questions so god seemed fit that brought men through austin tyler foundation that i could see and i could show 
them and to get my questions asked in a and answered mm -hmm. in an indirect way, mm -hmm. but was where I could write it, my feelings out, burn it, and then I could move on to the healing process. So yes, ma'am, we deal with men and women, but that's just our focus on women and children because okay. of what I experienced. Some okay. of the prevention things we work with women because it, it takes seven to nine times before that woman leaves. So she may be just on her third time. So we'll provide her with safety plans, um, support groups, um, all uh, different events that we're doing in preparation. I'm also, um, based on my career, um, used to work at Department of Family and Children's Service. So all the eligibility programs mm -hmm. and all that we can, you know, support because people don't leave for a plethora of reasons and financial where I'm going. And some people would quickly say, well, why you just didn't leave? Did you offer them your sofa? Did you offer them your paycheck? Yeah, yeah. You know, we have to be able to give some resources and not just say leave yeah. because you just don't know the state mm -hmm. of that person. And mm -hmm. once you say that to a victim that's trying to come out, you didn't send her back even worse. Wow. Then, mm -hmm. so we have to know what to say, how to say, coming up with if they're not ready to leave coming up with safety words. If I, you allergic to peanuts, if I get a text that say peanuts, um, I know I need to call 911. Um, mm -hmm. Get involved, let your neighbors know. If I leave the um, front porch light on, you know, call the police, I'll come and check or something. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, so that type of prevention. Um, I also speak with churches, um, schools, um, sororities, fraternities, and stuff of that nature to, you know, raise awareness to the community. Um, currently, uh, for October, we are collecting toiletry items so that we can do for our um, purses for a purpose. We put, provide those, um, I think, four shelters this year. Give them to the women, all their um, feminine needs, products, you know, and a nice purse this year. Um, it's the second year that Brighton have um, partnered with us. So we get nice purses and it's just wow. a way okay. of, um, you know, building the women's self-esteem up and have something of their own. Because some women leave with nothing and okay. just having this and having their own is just a, a small token that we do to help. We also have an adopt a shelter for Christmas. So making sure everyone is is good and and provide you know those activities and gifts and stuff um, for them as well. We also have our bicycle initiative where we just um, some of the women that come through our foundation for the year that we um, provide bicycles. I have um, I call him my black Santa Claus that he put the bikes together and helped me go donate you know um, drop them off. Yeah. And Thing. So we do several different things. We have our hurting hearts tea. Um, and that's just getting, I just get, we have line dancing because, you know, people would rather tell you the health issues, yeah. what's going on at the job, the children, but we're not talking about um, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And if one out of four is going through this, you know, some, some of your girlfriends yeah. are dealing yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't just like to have those conversations. So it's, a, it's, it's a difficult conversation, but it it's is. a necessary conversation. It's necessary. So I know y'all like to line dance. I know y'all like to do paint with a purpose. So I come on. And then I slide on in there. <laughs> and then I charge you to, you know, listen, go out, tell someone. If you don't know, give them my card, give them my number, tell them to go on the website. So we are all charged with this because once you know you are a mandated reporter if you know something say something if you see something do something we have to we see this is uh this epidemic is going on way too too it's much epidemic and i love the fact that you do you, you challenging us and i said in our introduction today that i believe this conversation was not just going to inform us inspire us but to challenge us if we know something 
do something. If we see something, say something. And I love the initiatives that you're doing. I'm going to join you in that purses for a purpose. Yes. Um, is there a date that we're collecting those things? We're collecting those until the first week in November. Okay. So, um, and is we have a drop-off place. We have a drop-off place. We have the Wing Suite in um, Grayson. We have one um, volunteer has de um, dedicated herself to. If you contact her, she will um, meet you and pick them up, pick up whatever. If you just want to collect at one location at the church. Mm -hmm. You know, we will come and pick it up just however you want to do it. We're okay. fine with it. And all the information is on the website. Okay. All right, then. So we're going to partner with you. Okay. And we're going to help you with that. And how can, I'm going to put the information up here because there are people that are listening and watching uh, our podcast. Those of you that are listening to us, if you're not on my YouTube channel, I want to encourage you to go to my YouTube channel at Dr. Tony G. Alvarado and subscribe to the channel. Watch and listen there as well. Uh, you can find this podcast on Anchor, uh, Apple, Spotify, Google, uh, wherever your favorite platform, uh, podcast platform is. But I also encourage you um, really, really pushing the YouTube channel because uh, there, as um, we want as many men and women, women to go there and subscribe to the channel, so that this type of information can go up in the, the, this program, uh, Harmonize Your Life podcast, can go up in the Google Analytics. The more of us who are subscribed to this podcast, when people are looking for information, looking for resources, and and looking for ways to uh, for self care, help, wellness, mental health domestic violence, breast cancer, all those things. When you type in those 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 words in Google, and um, then this podcast will be one of those that will come up as a resource, an information hub, or um, a, a place where people can get. Because, you know, we perish for the lack of knowledge. Yes. So we have to get, these word, get this word out. And this is just one of the ways that we do so through this podcast. And um, so I'm grateful for all the women and men who come on this podcast to help bring awareness and prevention to epidemics like uh, domestic violence or intimate partner violence. But today we are talking with LaDonna Roberts. LaDonna is the founder of the Austin Tyler uh, Foundation there um, here in, in the metro Atlanta area. Um, she And today we're talking about domestic violence, turning your pain, turning pain into purpose. Um, we're also, I want you to know where you can find um, Austin. Let's see here. That's not spelled correctly. Let me fix that. Um, Austin Tyler, A-U-S. Uh, let me let me fix that on the screen because um, I want to make sure that um, that we have that correct, correct there. Let me see. Do I have that right? Austin Tyler Foundation dot org. Austin Tyler Foundation, Tyler is Austin, A U S T I N T Y L E R Foundation.org is um, the organization that LaDonna is, is founded in honor of her son who, who was murdered um, by his father, who eventually killed himself, who shot her. And she turned her pain into purpose through the foundation. It was, um, and so there you can go to her website. Um, her Facebook page there on Facebook. They have a Facebook group, Austin Tyler Foundation INC. And on Instagram, you can find her at Austin Tyler 0420. And so I want to make sure that they can find you, LaDonna. So yeah. anybody, any woman here that want to send a purse uh, for the purse for the uh purses with purpose. I love that idea. You know, I'm all about <laughs> empowering and connecting and collaborating. You know what? We have to do this work together. Yes. We have yes. to do this work together. So you have my commitment that I'm going to uh, collect purses yes. and um, I'm going to do so um, through my local church. And I'm also going to do so through my Sisters Keeper Foundation for Women. We'll yes. join you in collecting purses so that you can we can fill these pur purses with and um, um, what about toiletry items? If people want to send those as well? Yes, if they want to send those as well. Uh, toothpaste, soap, 
deodorant is a list also uh, on the flyer that I can also share with you as well. Okay, so we'll okay. have that and we'll get that out in the community and um, partner with you. I am so, so grateful um, that you were able to come into our podcast and to in, to inform us, share your story. Um, it, um, this isn't my first time hearing your story, which is why I wanted you to come on the podcast because um, a few years ago we had you come to the church and you shared there. And so I'm grateful that you were able to come in um, on the podcast and we could get this word out even further. So um, LaDonna, as we wrap up, can you just share what, what would you like to say to a woman who's struggling, a woman who's not even sharing what she's going through or a woman who's come out. I would like for you to give us a final word of encouragement as we close out our conversation on today. First of all, I would definitely like to let everyone know, because I felt this myself, that you are not alone. You have a variety of strong women that's there, you waiting on you to say, I need help. I need assistance. How can I do this? Or just to come and lay and be, let us allow us to support you. So, first, that's what um, I would say. Just you're not alone. Second, I would say, I'm not my sister's keeper. I am my sister because it's just one woman. So, when you hurt, I hurt. And, and just thinking that there's no resources out here. This was a whole nother community of domestic violence that I didn't know anything about. God just bust the balloon and this is it. It is 34 certified domestic violence shelters in the state of Georgia. We have 159 counties. So Georgia, we have a problem. And so we have to make sure that we give the women that's wanting to come out, afraid to get out, a platform that we can provide these resources and support and education to them and their children. And I would say that we must, we must start speaking out. That's why I say I, I talk from the rooftop, <laughs> but we have to say, start with a word. We have to say something, reach out to say something. And so we can do something. But the most important is, like I was saying, to have a relationship with God, identify that I have a domestic violence situation and having that support. Women that come through us, some of I am the only support they have. They don't in shame, embarrassed to tell family because we can be so cruel and uncaring, sisterly. So mm -hmm. we are out here for you. So, yes. Um, Wow. That stat you gave about the counties, particularly in Georgia, um, with 159 counties and only 35 domestic violence facilities, mm -hmm. that's startling. Yeah. And that's one of the, the um, Liberty House, the shelter that's in, in Albany, Georgia, that was the one that I didn't have to go to, but I, I received some of the resources from there, the counseling service and stuff mm -hmm. and that nature, they service 11 counties around Albany, Georgia. Wow. So it's a one, lot. One place. Just one place that services that many um, counties. So it's definitely a need. Um, we, need we need. And that's that. just for the people, like you said, that are sharing it. Yes. That's so, yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. Thank you for your courage. Because you could have just, you know, you could have just went through, got your healing and or whatever. I wanted to. I yeah. wanted to. But he's like, mm -mm, I ain't save you just for you. And I <laughs> and I said, um, the, I call myself sometimes um, Thomas for the ones, people that's like, yeah, you don't look like you've been through. I said, because the spirit, but <laughs> my hands, you know, um, down for Thomas, you know, he wanted to touch where he went. So look, I got the marks if you want, you want to see or feel. 
that when he saved me. I know. He stopped everybody, everything, and came to seen about me on September 21st, 2004. And I'm so glad about it because I'm here to share and all the women that I have helped along the way and will continue to help in the future. So I one that lose a life, gain a life. And Austin have gave me so many lives. Wow. That I can share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for your courage, for your service, and the work that you are doing through the Austin Tyler Foundation. And may your son, Tyler, may his legacy be the work that you are doing. Thank you so much. Thank you for turning your pain into purpose. All right, everybody. Thank, uh, we had, uh, as I told you, this was going to be one of those conversations that uh, was going to grip us. And um, but I hope it called you to another level of awareness, but also action. And so um, we have opportunity to partner here with the Austin Tyler Foundation for those that would like. But if not this foundation, find another organization or someone in your so, uh, an organization in your area where you can be an advocate for women who are coming out of domestic violence situations. All right. Thank you again for being here on the podcast. And this will wrap up our session for this week, Turning Your Pain into Purpose, A Story of Domestic Violence with LaDonna Roberts. We'll be back next week as we wrap up our month, our Survivor Month uh, for Breast Cancer Awareness and um, for uh, domestic violence survivors. We have one more episode on next week. So stay with us throughout the entire month. We'll see you soon. Hi, this is Dr. Tony Alvarado, and I want to personally invite you to join the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network. Join us for fitness motivation, health and wellness information, inspiration, self-care strategies, and ideas for creating harmony in your life. As a certified health and wellness coach, it is one of my greatest honors to support women in their fitness, health, wellness, and self-care goals. Join the Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network, and we will do you good on your journey.